what I'd like to do is today is uh, we have a couple things on the plate. I want to go over another Werfel example um, that, that maybe does a little bit more than the last one did. Still not tons of stuff. Again, you know, we, we don't need to go crazy with all the capabilities that Werfel has. We just want to get a sense of what it does and, and uh, what we can do with it and, and the value that it brings to it. So we'll, we'll, I want to give an overview again to review exactly so we're sure on what's going on. Um, and I want to go over my example. I encourage you to look in Chapter 5, and we might take a minute to look at that depending on how, how the time goes. Because in Chapter 5 they do something similar to what I do, but they like take it a little bit further. So um, you can read through that example on your own, but I, I may take a look at it to, to hit some of the highlights of it. And then we're going to talk about getting, uh, 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 having you log on to the server here and, and why we have the server here and, and what benefits that it really offers us and, and why we're doing it. And uh, we'll talk about the procedure for logging on and transferring files over. Depending on the time, you may have a chance to practice that. And you may want to practice that really hard, so you might have to go over a bunch of examples to make sure that... Um, it really works. All right, if we're going to draw what Werfel does for us, we have our standard client, internet, server. So here's our web server software. All of this is going to live on the server system. Web server software, again, as we know, has access to our PHP scripts, which are used to dynamically create HTML. And by HTML, I mean the whole package, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and send it back to the client. All right. And again, depending on how extensive we can take it, our PHP scripts can integrate with databases and a lot of other stuff. All right. A couple other things to keep in mind is that a request comes in from here and it contains maybe form data, in other words, stuff that they put in on the form. Um, it contains IP address, which can be useful in determining the location of, of someone. But what we're interested in here is it, it contains what's called the user agent. And the user agent is, you know, roughly translates to the platform the client is running, the browser, the, the operating system, and that sort of stuff. All right. And in past weeks, we had our PHP script be smart enough to look at the user agent and maybe redirect them to another page or maybe have some smarts in it to say include this content, don't include this content. So once we have that user agent, we can do some stuff with it. And, and the simp most simplistic stuff is a binary, is it mobile, is it not? And we saw we had this big if statement to determine that and we could put that in our code and we could test and either redirect or, or customize the output of the page. Now, Werfel sort of takes that one step further. So here's the components <laughs> in Werfel. And I'm going to put a line down the middle to show the stuff that you're going to make and the stuff that is going to come from whoever it is um, that, that, that created Werfel. <coughs> you're going to have a Werfel configuration file that simply lets your PHP scripts know and, and lets everyone know where this stuff lives. All right? So, you need the Werfel configuration file. You have to come up with this because it's specific to your installation because it's going to point to where the files are on your web server and that might not be the same place for other web servers. So this is something 
I hesitate to say you write because what I did is I took their sample and simply tweaked it and there's additional parameters you can tweak for all kinds of configuration options. But minimally, you need to tell this configuration file where to find the rest of the Werfel stuff. So this is some folder somewhere out on your server. All right? There is then <coughs> going to be, in addition, there's going to be <coughs> Werfel libraries, library, <coughs> sometimes call that the API, and the Werfel database or repository. And what are we going to get from this? We're going to get from this more detailed information about our user. So the end result of this process, of all this thing, is more detailed <coughs> info about the client's platform. What can we do with that more detailed information? We can do what we did before, except to a greater degree. In other words, we can do more than simply saying, is this a mobile or not? We can ask, is it a tablet, for example? We can ask if it has a phone. We can ask all sorts of different things. All right? So we can do a better job dynamically creating a web page because we can take into account more factors about the user's client than simply the binary mobile or not. So that's the win. That's, that's what we get out of all of this. So what I did is I came up with an example. And you can download that example, all right, but you can't run it on your web server because, again, you probably don't have the Werfel files, and if you did, they probably aren't in the exact same place that they are on the development server. So we'll look at the code and we'll look at what you have to change and all that, but um, it, it won't be uh, it won't be like you can just take it and run run it um, without some installs and tweaks and all that stuff. All right, so let's look here at the example. So is this specifically for mobile? Because I know you used yes. to like in HTML to be able to pull all that information out of the header that's well, sent. And, and and you can you can still do that. Um, but again, keep in mind that that you know back when they did that, there were really only a limited number of options of the platform you were on. So it's much more simplistic. What this does is this allows you to query the, the, the user agent and, and, and the fact that there's going to be a whole lot of other user agents. And so like you can use it. You could use it to, yeah, yeah, you could use it, for example, to tell if they're, what browser they're on. You know, are they on Chrome or Internet Explorer? You know, so if, you, if you're Google, for example, and I'm browsing via Internet Explorer, I could pop up an ad that says, download Chrome, it's much better. And they do. <laughs> That's how I know they can do it, all right? So, um, so yeah. So even though, yeah, this is, the, the, the slant of this is for uh, uh, mobile devices simply because of the variety of that, you could still use this to do that sort of thing. But there might be simpler ways to do it. All right, this might be, this might be like, the, the if, if you're just doing it for that, this might be the proverbial, um, you know, uh, cracking a walnut with a sledgehammer, you know, it might, might be a bit of overkill. Now, the other nice thing is, and I probably should, I hope we can still see this. I would think that if Werfel does an update, should be able to just, boom, put it, lay that over your old stuff. 
As long as you don't change the location, you don't have to change your config file. As long as they didn't change the API too drastically, like as long as they didn't get rid of stuff, if they just added stuff, as long as they didn't deprecate some things, then you shouldn't have to change your code, shouldn't have to change your configuration file. You may get some new capabilities in here that you can take advantage, but again, unless they deprecate some stuff, your old stuff should still work, and you get the benefit of the more up-to-date database. So, nice thing is, again, this should just be, boom, putting that out there, this stuff should remain intact. All right. Let's go and look at the page. And for this page, I just did a very simple thing. I just did a, a step better than we've done in the past. So instead of having a two versions, I have three versions. Yes? Sorry. We are using these servers, not our own. So you're talking about doing this stuff in theory, not in practice, in terms of the workflow putting it on a, on a server, correct? We're not putting that on our web servers. That's why we're linking to the ones that you have. Yes. Okay. You don't have to put it on your server because it, there's one provided for you. All right. If you wanted to, and that you know, it might even be good experience and good practice to do that. But I decided, eh, I don't, I don't want to make that a requirement. All right. And and there is one available for you, so so you can go and and uh, just use this one. I guess what I'm saying is, is you know, a lot of times people will take my examples and run them and on their server or their software and see, uh, you know, flat out, right, right out of the gate, this isn't going to work because you probably don't have it installed. Even if you did install it, you'd have to change my configuration to point to that. So in theory, you could get it to work, but yeah. Now we'll talk about how it's installed on this web server um, when we start talking uh, about your accounts and logging on and that sort of thing. Or at some point today, anyhow. All right, let's look at this. And again, really all I did here, I didn't do anything drastic. Um, I want to keep this a simple example. So we have the simple example that is in, uh, that I'm covering over now, and there's a more extensive example in the book. And we'll talk a little bit about that, probably. If I don't talk a little bit about that, it's in chapter five. So here's a version. See if I get this right the first time. And I did. Alright. There's three versions of this page. This is the desktop version. Alright. It has on it, notice it has a certain background image. It has a certain layout. It has some content here. Um, and it has a video. If you click on it, the video plays. All right. Let's look if we view this on a tablet. And the difference for this on the tablet, if I remember right, is The video itself isn't there. There's a link to the video. All right. And when you click on that, we can fire up YouTube and do that. Why would I? Why would I put a link to a video instead of embed the video on a tablet? What's one good reason? Pardon me. Smaller file size, smaller download. All right. Even though that code doesn't contain the actual video, it just contains you know, uh, point to it. But keep in mind, playing YouTube videos on PCs are a piece of cake, right? Playing a YouTube video on a tablet sometimes requires different software, and you might not play it the same way. So what I said is I create a link for it. Notice when I'm on the Android platform, when I click this, oh, I wish I should bring this in. Are any, any, none of you are in the Android development class, are you? Shoot. This is a good example of something I was talking about the other day. Notice when we click this, 
it gives you an option of how you want to view it. So I could view it within the YouTube app, which means it's, it, within that it probably would do better than just viewing it within the browser. And likewise, if I viewed this on an iPhone or whatever, it would probably do a better job running their app. So I decided to pull that out on any of the mobile devices. But yeah, a Android is smart enough if you initiate an activity, it looks at that activity and decides, almost like with Windows file associations, it looks at it and decides what application handles this sort of thing. And if you have more than one application that handles this sort of thing, it will ask you, which application do I want to use? So, in a nutshell, tablet pretty much looks like the desktop, but a link to the video instead of the video is being part of the page. The phone version actually looks like a, an app. All right. The little secret sauce here, this will sort of dovetail into our next topic on how we achieve this. But if we look, this looks like an app. There's no background image. There are app-like links on the top. So if I click from members, I go to that page. Looks like an app. And again, there's a link to the video instead of the video itself. So it looks radically different, and there's different content. Notice that as well. On the mobile version, on the mobile phone version, all right, there's only one paragraph of text all right, on the home page. On the desktop, there is three, and on the tablet version, there is three. All right. So... Now this particular application, I'm really only interested in the platform. I'm not interested in like the capabilities of the platform. So there's no like, I'm not worried about whether it's a, whether you can call a phone number on it or not. I'm just worried about is it a tablet, is it mobile, or, or whatever. All right. Again, the example we saw last time, I was worried about different things. All right. So, how do I accomplish this? Let me go and download the code, and we'll take um, a look at this. <coughs> This, by the way, does not involve redirection. Although you certainly probably could come up with a strategy that did involve redirection. I probably, if I had to do it over again, and I'm doing this class in a different sequence than I did in past semesters, all right? Um, but if I was doing this over again, I realized just today I should have covered this stuff before I talked about redirection. But, so if you, take, you know, if you take this again in the spring, I'm going to talk about this before I talk about redirection. All right, at any rate, let's go and let's pull this code down. And take a look at it. thing about, by the way, putting it on this server for my demonstration purposes and then for your testing purposes is you can actually test it on a mobile device then. It's more difficult if you're running your server to test code. But now that it's out on the web and you put your stuff out there, even if you do the development work on your server, you can actually pop it up there and you can test it on a mobile device. So that's a, that's a big benefit of this. I have some web speed. I have a web server. So I've been testing okay. my stuff. It, it is nice to see. It yeah, it is. Stuff. It is. Yeah. You know, I mean, because an emulator is an emulator. Yeah. Right? You know. And I found that emulator, it's, I had an issue with, like, the zoom and all that on the emulator. The, the, the page wasn't looking kind mm -hmm. of the 
way, I was looking on my phone, mm -hmm. um, and I mean, I had to play around like that initial zoom and all that to get it to kind of work. But right. There was different, like, different snippets of code you could put in there. Right. All right, let's look at our home page. Because if we look at our home page, the other pages are pretty much like the home page. So I'm not sure we'll look at any of the other ones. I don't know if there's anything exciting going on on those beyond this. All right. We're going to look at this stuff. It's two separate include files, all right, because, because why? This is more or less specific to this particular lab, uh, or not lab, but project. I suppose I could incorporate this code into other projects, but this is, this has a functionality that this particular mini site needs in it. Whereas this is the standard code from Werfel. So all I did with this one is I just took their standard config file and tweaked it to work on my particular server. So the code in the first include file isn't my code. All right, I just tweaked the, the Werfel code to point properly to the repository and, the, and the, the, the API, the library and all that. The second one is code that I did write, all right? And I wrote it to do what it is I, I needed to do. Now, if we look at all of our pages here, actually, the index is the only one I did worthwhile, if that's a word. All right. The the credits and the members page just sort of fell into place. I just I, I use responsive techniques to apply the different style sheet to them. And that's about it. All right. So I guess we're looking at the index file. If I was doing this full blown, I would have put that same chunk of code that's at the beginning of this guy. Um, I would have put that in the other ones as well. All right. So let's take a look at this. Let's first look at the Werfel configuration file. And I am not sure if we looked at an example of this last time or not. It, it, it would benefit us to look at it again if I didn't. The Werfel configuration uh, standard. All right. All I changed was these two lines. And what these two lines point to is they point to the Werfel stuff. The rest of the stuff I could tweak the configuration if I wanted to, but not really necessary. The end result of this is I will have a Werfel Manager object that is wired properly to the Werfel directories and that can handle my, can sort of be the pipeline between my PHP code and the Werfel stuff. So that's sort of the end result of this, as I have this variable, this Werfel Manager, that is my pipeline if you will, from my PHP code to the Werfel stuff. So, nothing really earth shattering here in terms of what I did. Um, I'm sure there are configuration options that you could look through and scrutinize and tweak to make it behave exactly the way you wanted it to. But again, this is sort of a standard vanilla um, Werfel installation. I didn't really do any customization. so. That's fine. All right. Now, the other thing I have, this user agent include file, is one I did indeed write. All right. And I'm using this Werfel Manager, remember that's the pipeline, to allow me to get some Werfel information. All right. I actually don't know if this line is required or not. That might have been a leftover from something else. I possibly could get rid of this line. 
because I think this line is the one I'm really interested in. This, I think, is a carryover from, from something else. All right, what does this line do? This, this line grabs a requesting device object. Again, we talked about objects last time, object being a software representation of something in the real world. Um, an object typically has two things uh, about it. It has properties, that is characteristics, and it also has methods or functions. In this context, think of most of the methods are going to be kind of like me asking the device questions. Are you a phone? Are you a tablet? What operating system are you running? That kind of thing. So those are the methods, those are the kinds of methods that we have on this object. So it's, it's like we're asking questions of the device itself. We're asking questions to that software representation of our device. All right? So this represents our device. We are going to ask questions of it. Here we're asking, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. Here we're asking, are you a wireless device? So the syntax for doing that is we ask the device, get capability, is wireless device. Now, this part of it is not something I made up. Right? That dollar sign request device corresponds to the name that I chose here. Get capability is the, the, the one of the, is the workhorse of the Wordful API because that's in essence what we're going to spend a lot of time doing, asking it, do you have this capability or what is your operating system or things like that. And this, again, comes from the Wordful documentation. If we went into and I think we briefly looked at this last time. I might have like... Here's a list of all the capabilities that we can ask it. We can ask this brand, we can ask this model, we can ask this marketing name, we can ask blah, 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 blah. Here we see is tablet. That's one of the questions that we're going to ask it in a second here. So, we're asking these capabilities. Here we ask if it's wireless. Here we ask if it is a tablet or not. All right. Now, the purpose of my include file is to do what we did in previous examples, but to do it one better. Because if you remember in previous examples, I looked at the user agent and decided if it was mobile or not and set a variable to mobile or not mobile. Now, I'm setting a variable called class to one of three possibilities. Is it a tablet? Is it a mobile device? Or is it a desktop? The first thing we ask is, is it wireless, right? If it's wireless, we know that it could be a lot of different things, right? Could be a mobile, could be a tablet. But if it's not wireless, guess what? It's a desktop, right? No wired phones out there. No, no phones that you connect to the Internet through an Ethernet cable. So therefore, if it's not wireless, then it's a desktop. Interesting question would be is, is what, what the Wordful database would report if I was running a laptop. So that would that'd be something to try, see if, it, see if it gets confused and thinks I'm on a mobile device because the, the laptop is wireless. All right. I, I don't know that. If it is wireless, we are asking the question, is it a tablet? So. If it's a tablet, we set that class variable to tablet. Otherwise, we set it to mobile. So we have a series of two if statements. These are nested ifs. Notice how I indented the if statements because this is the true part of the first if statement. 